This video is about Java interfaces. And because we're going to create a bunch of related files, I'm going to make a directory called shapes and go into it. A Java interface is a contract. And I'm going to show you how it works. First, I'm going to write the contract by creating an interface. So, so you notice the existence of a new keyword interface. Interface turned green and therefore it's a reserve word. So what we put inside of an interface is method headers. Now for our purposes here, a shape will be something that knows how to compute. three things, diameter, area, perimeter. So to be a shape, you need to be able to compute your diameter, area, and perimeter. Um, since there are empty parentheses here, that's probably going to depend on the state of the shape. And all of these things return doubles because we know that things like circles are not going to have integer areas. So we'll use doubles. So let's go ahead and save this file. You can even compile it. But as of now, you can't really do anything with it. So what we have is a contract. And the contract says, you, if you want to be a shape, you need to be able to compute your diameter, area, and perimeter from your state and return those as doubles. So the next step in this process is to get it to create a class and have it be a shape. So to do that, what you do is you go public class rectangle implements. It's a very common mistake to leave the S off. Make sure that word changes color. This says I intend to implement all of the methods that are specified by shape. So I'm just going to I'm just going to I'm just going to read the other file in, knock these things off. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and All right. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, and I don't want that. Oh yes, that was Kind of an irritating thing to have happen, but it happens. All right. So here's our rectangle class. Now to compute diameter and area and perimeter, probably the things you need to know are the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle. So here's a here we have our two state variables, and we'll make a constructor. And we will go ahead and initialize those things. Okay, so now we have, now we can make rectangles. Right. And we need to implement these three methods. Now, if you are doing something complex, probably a smart thing for you to do before you even start. If you're doing something complicated, this is a little programming tip of mine, is you should stub in your methods. 
especially if the methods are going to take you some thought to write. And the reason I'm doing this, okay, the reason I'm doing this is that way my class will compile. And you never want to be far from a compiling program. That's the little red Riding Hood pr principle. It says stay close to the path of compilation so the big bad wolf of pages of error messages doesn't try to devour you. Okay, so we have signed the contract. We have signed the contract and we have agreed. The contract says we must have these three methods, all right, with the appropriate signatures and return types. And we have them. However, at this juncture, they're not terribly useful. So now we'll go ahead and start implementing them. The diameter is just the length of the diagonal across the rectangle. And I'm going to use good old math.highpot because it just saves, uh, yeah, it looks nicer. And it sort of tells people what you're doing. Area, return width times height, perimeter. Two times width plus height. Okay, so there's area, diameter, and perimeter for a rectangle. So my rectangle implements shape. Now notice what happens if I cut one of these methods out with a comment. And I try to compile this. Come on, undo. It will give me a nasty gram because, well, we don't know what an abstract class is, but we'll learn about that later. But it says it does not override the abstract area, abstract method area and shape. So we are in breach of the contract and who is enforcing this? The compiler enforces this. Failure to have a method specified by an interface is a compile time error. So I shall get rid of that error. And there we go. Now I'm going to make a second uh, class for circles. And I'm also going to implement shape. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so and you'll notice that I have all three of these, all these files reside in the same directory. Okay, so here's my methods. So now, how do we specify a circle? Well, we have a choice. We could specify a diameter, but but usually you specify the radius, okay? But you could do this all with diameter and it would work just fine. So now we're gonna say, uh, oh, we need to make a constructor before we move on. And we're just going to initialize state in it. Okay, so we have done that. And we have a circle. So we have circle implement shape. We remember from high school geometry that the diameter, well, actually, not even high school geometry. We all know that. Because we've all had pizza before. Okay, radius is math.pi times radius times radius. Pi r squared. That's true in Chicago. In New York, pi r round. 
perimeter. Two. Two times math dot pi times radius. Two pi r. And I need to say return here. Lest I be ululated at by the compiler. So now I have a circle class. It implements shape. And now I'm going to go ahead and do this. Oop, oops. Let's try that again. Okay, everything compiles. So now what I'm going to do is open JShell and inspect these classes. Because we're going to do a variety of things with them. First, open shape.java. Okay, that reads that into memory. Then we're going to open rectangle.java. Then we're going to open circle.java. Okay, so here's our three there are three classes. So I can do this. I can say rectangle. R is new rectangle. 6, 8. Okay. Our two string method is kind of wanting. But we can fix that. But. We can pick the area is 48. Hey, Pythagorean triple time, 6, 8, 10. And the perimeter is 28. Okay? So nothing surprising there. And you could do the same thing for a circle. But here's the interesting part about interfaces. Interfaces, just like classes, are types. And variables can have an interface type. I can do this. Ooh, okay. My shape variable's pointing at a rectangle. Okay, area, diameter, and perimeter. Now, I can also do this, the same variable of type shape I can point at a circle. Now I'm pointing at a circle. Why can I do this? Here's the reason. Java has a hierarchy of types. And an interface is a type. And an interface, if you implement an interface, you are a subtype of that interface, and that interface is a super type of your class. And so you can sort of think of there being a hierarchy or tree that grows down, and things that are subtypes are lower than things that are not. So you are allowed, with the type of a variable, to point down this tree. So if I implement an interface, I can have a variable of interface type and point at my object. Here I have two different classes having the same interface that they implement. And therefore, I can make a variable that points at either type. Now, there is a limitation to this. And I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and make that limitation happen, okay? So I'm going to exit from this. Now, I'm going to give rectangle a new method, okay? To implement an interface, I'm required to implement these three methods, but I can implement others as well. That is perfectly permissible. In fact, it's very common. I'm going to make 
in fact, I'm going to make a method called numsides. Now, it makes absolutely no sense to do that for a circle. A circle doesn't have sides. But a rectangle does, so I'm going to make it implement numsides. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into J shell. Okay, and you're going to see something interesting happen here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Oh, let's see. Oh, I need to go ahead and do all the opens. Open circle.java. Open shape.java. And let's open rectangle. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened these three things. Now I'm going to say shape s is equal to new rectangle of 6, 8. So there's my rectangle. So I know I can compute its area, diameter, and perimeter. I did that already. But now what I'm going to attempt to do... Wait a minute. If I look in my file, I'll see that I have numsides implemented. But this variable is of shape type. And the type of a variable Type of the variable determines visible methods. This is called the visibility principle. So the type determines the visible methods. Now there's a second principle that's also tied to this. object being pointed at executes the method code. So when I go s.area, that object knows it's a rectangle, so it's going to run rectangle code. So a way to think about this, the job of executing methods is delegated to the object being pointed at, all right? That also has a name. That's called the delegation principle. So we have the visibility principle. And we have delegation principle. Now, here's something that's sort of a little cheating. I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. But I can do this. The type object is a subtype of every object type in Java. And I can go like this. Okay, object O is equal to new circle of five. Yes, there's a two string method, but object doesn't have any area method and therefore that method cannot be seen. So if you're, if you're using a variable of a given type, there is a trade-off. A more general type can see fewer methods and therefore is limited in its capabilities. On the other hand, it can point at a wider array of objects. So you have a trade-off here. If you use a type that's too general, then you won't see the methods you need to see. If you use a type that's too specific, then you won't be able to point at all the things that you want. And you can see that this design that we have here for area, circle, and rectangle is, has, a, has the correct balance. It has the correct balance. If we are interested in area, diameter, and perimeter of shapes, yeah, th this, is, this is exactly what we want. And 
part of the design process when you create an interface for a related collection of classes is to achieve this balance. Now let's add one other item to our list. I'm going to make a triangle class. All right. And I'll warn you, there's going to be a little geometry used in here, but it's, it's things you can actually look up. All right. And you're going to see that we're even going to put a private method in this in, the, in, in this uh, class. So I'm going to go ahead and read in um, my shape.java. All right. And then I'm going to replace all these semicolons. And stub in the methods. Because this is going to take a little thought. Especially area. Area is going to take thought. Perimeter isn't going to take a great deal of thought. Diameter is going to take a little thought. But here's how I'm going to specify my rectangle. Or my triangle. I'm going to have side one. Side two. Now, you'll remember from Mr. Ray Shap's geometry class, if you went to Randolph High School in New Jersey, that side, side, side uniquely determines a triangle up to congruence and totally determines its area. Okay, so let's begin <clears throat> talking about this. First of all, the diameter. The diameter of a shape is just the distance between the two furthest points in the shape. Well, if you think about a triangle, what points are the furthest away? The two along the longest side. So the longest side is the diameter. And I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna say math.max of size one, math.max of side two. comma side three. All right. And that's the longest of the three sides. We've done that. Now the, the other thing that's really easy to do is the perimeter. And since I've written a fair amount of code, let's go ahead and compile this and make sure it's happy. I never like to code for more than a few minutes before I run compilation. It, it just makes life better. Okay, so I know my code is all legit. And here's the problem. The problem is area. Okay, we're in a programming shop and our boss says you need to implement this and your quarterly bonus is riding on it. And so, you might say, oh, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to, I'm going to learn about Heron's formula. Okay, Heron's formula, and I shall click on something like this. Beautiful. It says if a triangle has three sides, you specify the three lengths, you compute something called the semi-perimeter. And the area inside the triangle is this. Now, we know some bad things can happen. For example, if I specify lengths 1, 1, and 6 for a triangle, we know that's not going to work. And we could write a whole bunch of conditional logic to try to snake that out. But no, there is an underhanded, oleaginous, and sneaky way to do this and we're going to opt for that path. And that is, this thing that's underneath the radical, if that thing is positive or zero, everything's okay. Even if it's zero, you just have a, 
degenerate triangle. You know, a three, four, seven is just a flattened triangle. Okay, we'll allow that. But if that thing's less than zero, it tells you you have an illegal triangle. You have something like a one, one, six triangle. You should try plugging in a couple of examples and see that happen. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to compute this thing under the radical. And I'm going to make what I like to call a poop smith. A poop smith is a helper method. In fact, I'm going to make this method be static. And the name is going to be radican. I'm going to say double A, double B, double C. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to compute the thing that's under that square root. So they said compute the semi-perimeter. And you may as well do this in two steps. Otherwise, it just looks ugly. A plus B plus C divided by 2. Okay, there's your semi-perimeter. And so what are we going to return? We'll go back here and look. We're going to return S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. So that's going to be our return value. Minus A times S minus B times S. And you notice when we translate from math to Java, we put an explicit time sign in. All right. So that's the thing that's under the radican. And since it's sort of a behind-the-scenes thing, this should be a private method. Okay? It's, it, it's, it's not really part of our triangle interface. It's part of its internal workings. So we shall conceal it from the end user. Okay, let me get rid of that extra uh, curly brace. Now we're ready to go. First, we need a constructor. So you notice I have delayed writing the constructor because you will see in a moment why. Three, all right, so here's my, here's my lovely constructor. And I'm gonna do the following. That radicand is less than zero. I know I have a bad triangle. I'm going to throw a pi in the face. Of whomever calls it. Okay, so I'm going to throw in this. This is a runtime exception. I'm going to throw this exception. All right, because this is an error. This is. Sort of like when you did big fraction, you threw an exception when the idiot who is your client programmer put a zero denominator into your big fraction. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and done that. If the radicand of the three sides is less than zero, throw, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot side one. And I'm going to do a little search and replace there. And so once I get past that, I know this is an acceptable triangle. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now I'm ready to compute the area. Now, quick question. Does it make sense to have a num sides method? I'd say yes. A triangle has the hat it has three corners and the triangle has three sides. Public int num sides. Turn three. Okay. 
So now let's go ahead and compile this. I've been typing a long time, and that entails great danger. Oh, I misspelled illegal argument exception. Ooh. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to do this. You have to throw a new one. All right. Beautiful. Now, here's one other question that I'm going to put to you. It might be of interest to have yet another interface in here. And that interface is going to be for a polygon. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that class, or that interface. And you'll notice the same naming convention applies. The name of the interface has to match the name of the file. Now I could put all of the existing methods of shape into this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to use the extends keyword on an interface. And all that means is I have all, I've specified all the methods that are in shape, but I'm going to add one new one. And the name of that method is going to be in num sides. And I'm going to recompile everybody. Now, let's go look at our classes. You can see rectangle fulfills the contract. Therefore, instead of implementing shape, I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to implement polygon. Same thing's true of triangle. All right. So now we have this notion one interface extends another. It just adds additional methods to that interface. Good grief, Apple. All right. So now it's time to inspect all this and see what the benefits are of having done all this. And we're going to open. All right. So everybody compiles. Let's open J shell. I'm going to open shape first. I'm going to open polygon. You probably want to do that because Polycon depends on shape. So we're going to open rectangle. We're going to open triangle. Okay. Now, here's something we know. Rectangle, triangle, and circle all implement polygon but if you implement polygon because polygon extends shape they implement shape rectangle and triangle implement polygon so they implement shape circle does not implement polygon okay so let's see what we can get away with here so if we say shape s is new shape Oh, wait a minute, I can't say, oh, notice I can't do that. You can't make an instance of an interface. In a way, it's sort of clastrated. You can't make instances of interfaces. You have to make instances of actual classes. So let's say new circle, five. So shape will point at a circle. And I'm going to make a new rectangle, 6, 8. And that works. And I'm going to say new uh, triangle, 3, 4, 5. And since we haven't driven it before, let's drive it. The area is going to be 6. 
Pythagorean triple time, we know that's 5, and the perimeter will be 12. So everything works nicely. So a shape can point at a circle, a rectangle, or a triangle. Now let's go polygon P equals new polygon. No, we can't say new polygon, new rectangle of six comma eight. Because the polygon interface specifies num sides. Num sides is visible to a polygon type variable. However, if we try to do this with a circle, ooh, see that? Cannot do that with a circle. A circle does not implement polygon and therefore a polygon variable cannot point at a circle. Okay, but it can point at a rectangle. P is new triangle of here, let's let's put in an odd triangle here. This is not a Pythagorean triple. And you can see the area is 8.944 something. Diameter is seven. Its perimeter is three plus six plus seven. Okay. Now there's a name for this. This phenomenon is called polymorphism. Poly meaning many, morph meaning shape. So a variable of interface type can point to an object of any subtype of that interface. Variable of any subtype. Now, um, one other thing that crossed my mind is this. You are allowed to do this. have an array list. We can use, because an, an interface is a type, and that type can be used as a type parameter to a generic class. So I can do things like this. I can add a rectangle. circle. A new triangle. Hey, there we go. So that array list can hold any shape you want. Okay, so there are a lot of advantages to this. Interface, interfaces allow you to point at objects of a related group of types. And then what, what they allow you to point at is an object of a type that is a subtype of that interface. And how do you, are you a subtype of an interface? You implement that interface. So this is the beginnings of interfaces in Java. We will talk more about this phenomenon because there are things such as this. You are allowed to specify an interface type in a class method. But let's leave that for another day.